Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for August 30th, 2024. So the last trading day of the month, and it really appears as if the bulls are really trying to make a statement here, closing into the month, really pushing hard, and um, it looks like there is that opportunity for that today depending on how that economic data comes out. So how about we take a look at what happened overnight? First off, Asian markets last night, very strong up across the board. Australia is nearing an all-time high. We had the Nikkei up substantially 0.74%. Uh, and we had Hong Kong zooming last night, that tech heavy sector over there, 1.14% um, higher. Even Shanghai had a really good day, up 0.68%. If we take a look at European markets this morning, they are much more modest this morning. We've got the DAX up 0.17%. FTSE is up 0.33%, and the CAC is up 0.47%. Um, so we'll have to watch that. Um, Eurozone inflation uh, dipped to a three-year low. If we take a look at U.S. futures this morning, well, we're uh, looking for a gap up open, particularly in the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ right now is up 111 points um, or 0.57% in the pre-market. We've got S&P futures up 0.32% and Dow futures up a little bit more of a modest 0.14% after zooming um, yesterday. Let's take a look at what we've got going on in um, the bond markets. Bond markets are, um, well, kind of a mix in here. We have the two-year bonds at 3.90%, moving up a little bit. 10-year bonds at 3.86%, and the 30-year bonds at 4.13% this morning. So a little bit of movement in those um, this morning. Taking a look at oil prices here this morning, we've got oil pretty flat. Um, oil futures um, only up two cents at 75.93 a barrel. And we have Brent is down seven cents at 79.87 a barrel. Uh, natural gas, well, UNG has been moving around all over the place down here on this bottom. Um, had a really good day yesterday. Um, on that natural gas, but um, maybe catching a little bit of pullback here this morning. We also had a good day yesterday in some of our precious metals, taking a look at gold. Gold shot up yesterday, but this morning, gold just a little bit on the downside. Right now, gold futures um, showing a little bit of bearishness, being down $9.50 an ounce in the future. Silver is also slightly lower here this morning. We'll see how that goes throughout the day because typically if we're expecting the Fed to cut rates, dollar is going to fall. And of course, that would mean precious metals, commodity prices tend to go up. Copper this morning, interesting, is up just slightly and so is palladium. Uh, just a little bit higher here this morning trying to break into some resistance. Nice little pattern going on in there. And I've been kind of keeping an eye here on this FCX and it's just not quite ready for prime time yet, but could be setting up a pattern here. So keep an eye on that. Let's take a look. Well, no, actually we've already taken care of the bonds. Let's take a look at um, cryptos here. Boy, it has been really volatile here in the crypto markets, um, whipping all over the place. If you look at BATO, it smooths that out quite a bit. But um, this morning we've got Bitcoin um, trying to follow through with yesterday's gains. Um, up 1.94, or excuse me, um, 194 or 0.33%. Um, Ether, however, is down 0.42%. Uh, so we got kind of a mix in those cryptos this morning. So with that, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video.
Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. How about we take a look at these charts, see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today on this last trading day of August. Boy, time is flying, isn't it? If we take a look here at the diamonds, we remember when we look at these charts, we want to look at them with... Um, that real critical eye. We don't want to um, look in, at them with our bias. We want to look at them um, for what they are, not for what they want, um, not for what we want them to be. So, taking a look here at the diamonds, as you can see, we certainly have. Um, we had quite a move yesterday, ended up leaving maybe a little bit of an uncertain candle in here. Um, Long-legged spinning top doji up here at the top um, and trying to gap up here this morning. So if the bulls can continue to find that inspiration, well, there's every reason to believe that we could keep moving on up and finding those blue sky highs. There's no resistance above here in the diamonds. If the bears were to find some inspiration, well, we've got a little bit of price support right in here we could pull back test that and if that were to fail then maybe pushing on down here to test this area of support in the chart might be something of interest to, to be paying attention to of course we've got that upside trend and of course beyond that you can see these levels I've got drawn in the chart now remember we are very stretched away from our 50-day moving average and we had this has been an extraordinary run to the upside so just be careful when in this condition because we are overbought and as I continue to mention as we continue to make this stretch to the upside make sure you're tightening up those stops maybe even taking some profits because we will eventually see a consolidation or a pullback here in the market. Um, and let's take a look at our uh, SPY, SPY, um, still struggling in here. We tried to make that move here yesterday, tried to break through that resistance here in the chart, ended up closing back down, pulling back, putting in kind of a um, inverted hammer pattern or a shooting star bet. Now, typically a shooting star inside a consolidation isn't, isn't really anything to be concerned about. Um, so if those bulls can find inspiration here, well, we'll want to watch for that possibility they could push on through. And then, of course, right up there to test all-time highs. And then, of course, blue sky high breakout if they can get that done. If the bears were to come up with any inspiration today, then pulling back in this chart, you can see we've got a little bit of congestion in this consolidation. There might be a little bit of support somewhere in the middle here someplace, but then we um, could easily come right on down here into um, that next level of support. And then down there, just kind of progressing down through those candles into that potential gap. This um, upside trend, obviously, yeah, we've kind of slipped beyond that upside trend, which was really zooming uh, trend. So once we um, establish whether we're gonna move up or move down here, I'll make an adjustment on this trend line. If we take a look at our moving averages here, you can see we are elevated just slightly above our 50-day moving average. So it wouldn't be out of the question if the bears do find some reason to get going that we would see some kind of a fade back in here to the 50 to retest that area. If we take a look at our QQQ, boy, it is raging bullishness this morning in the QQQ in the pre-market, really pushing to the upside. But unfortunately, our chart is just not um, giving us lots of warm and fuzzies in here um, for that upside move. If you take a look across here, this is starting to look a little bit like a lower high in the QQQ. And you can see yesterday's candle kind of slip beyond this um, trend line that I have in here, but that's not an accurate trend line because we're still kind of looking for that higher low to see if we can find it in here in the chart. So pull that back. Um, looking at this chart, if the bulls can find inspiration, well, we can see we can press right up into here and see if we can break yesterday's high and then pushing through that little resistance right there. Beyond that point, well, maybe we can stretch on up and uh, test this big black candle here for the high and resistance above 
in the chart. Beyond that point, we may find a gap up here that we could fill if we can push on through there. If the bears, however, find some inspiration uh, today, you can see we're kind of clinging right here to just a little tiny bit of price support over in here. We're trying to hang in on that, but you can see pretty easily if the bears were to get going here, we could quickly slip below and fill this gap here in the chart. So if this support doesn't hold, look for that potential gap to fill. It's one of the problems with this all or nothing market, the way we're leaving gaps behind and we're stretching so much in this. It's either all in or all out market. If we continue that pullback, well, you can see we can run through these areas here in the chart before we come on down to this more of a major area price support. Now, I'm not suggesting that would happen today, those are just the levels I'm looking at. Now, if we take a look at our moving averages here, you can see we're struggling around that 50-day moving average. Yesterday, we slipped back below with that uncertainty in here, and we're trying to gap that back above that 50 and hang on to it. So keep an eye on this area. This is fairly critical here for the NASDAQ. If we were to take a look at our IWM, IWM um, has a very bullish pattern in, in here holding up. As a matter of fact, I really probably should just put a trend line right up through here and adjust it in. You can see moving up in that trend, we held this higher low in the chart, trying to hang on to a little bit of price support on the bottom of that candle and pushing on through to the upside. So if the bulls can continue to find that inspiration, well, let's see if we can break back above yesterday's candle, maybe push up um, right on into that high, and then we would probably start looking at some areas right up here to see if we can break through into there. Now, getting up through there, we're going to be facing that 2021, 2022, high point here in lots of um, high point resistance levels in that area on the Russell. Let's take a look at our VIX. Now our VIX pulled back yesterday, ultimately um, easing some of that concerns that we had the day before. And you can see we're still holding in here in this consolidation on this support. So we we'll want to be watching that pretty closely here. Um, as um, we progress throughout the day, you'll notice that we're stuck between some support, we're stuck between some resistance here in the chart, and we're just kind of winding around here trying to, it's like we're setting up for a big move, either up or down in the market. So be prepared for that possibility. If the bears can find inspiration, well, we can see that resistance up here, and we'd push up into this area and maybe work on filling this gap right here and if the the bulls were to find inspiration well breaking on down and maybe we start coming down into this area of price support so keep an eye on that let's take a look at our t20s our t2122 indicator we continue to stay um, locked in this um, bearish reversal zone in the chart, as you can see, pressed up here yesterday, mostly um, with that energy that was in the diamonds. And you can see we have finished the day up here pretty elevated in T2122. Now with the data we have coming out today, if it's bullish for us, we still have some upside push that we can make in here in that chart. And remember, we can linger up here in this chart for quite a period of time but remember it never goes beyond this point so as we stretch and stretch and stretch in t2122 we want to be watching for that potential pullback anytime we could see some profit taking coming into play or even that bearish wave coming into the market and if those bears do come in well we've got quite a um, an area that we could pull back pretty quickly here in that chart. So keeping in mind, we are quite extended here in our T2122 and we've just continued to linger up here in this um, just uber bullishness and race um, to the upside. If we take a look at our uh, T 
Oops, T2108, well, our T2108 also turned back up. You'll notice even as we were hitting some new highs in the diamonds, we weren't able to break this recent high here in T2108, but we're pushing hook good, and you can see the bulls are definitely in control. Just remember, as we push up into these areas of resistance, we start reaching extreme um, overbought conditions up here in the mid-70s. If we take a look at T2107, same thing is true. Really bullish um, in that chart, continuing to hold up nicely. 58% of the stocks above their 200-day uh, moving average, but you will want to notice we've got a little resistance in here up above. Didn't quite make it with the enthusiasm to get back up there yesterday above that prior high. And as you can see, once we get up here in the mid-60s, we're really reaching extreme um, overbought um, areas of the chart. And then if we take a look at our T2101, uh, T2101 had a little tiny breadth increase yesterday, and it was really heavily centered into the tech giants um, yesterday. Remember, we seem to be going back into that situation where um, we're tech-centric um, in the market. As long as we can make the big tech giants move, we do pretty well in the indexes. So keep an eye on that. Corporate buybacks have been a very big contributor to this rally to the upside. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting. Oh, wait, what we should do is we should take a look at our economic calendar. Our economic calendar here today, well, we know we've got some uh, news this morning that is market moving. Um, we've got the um, personal incomes and outlays number, the core PCE number, which is the Fed's favorite reading in here. And you can see we've got month over month are looking at this to stay flat, personal consumption to actually increase here. We've got um, month over month uh, PCE price index um, increasing by one tenth and year over year staying flat. If we look right here, um, our um, core PCE month over month staying flat. And if you'll uh, take a look at that annual, they're actually suggesting in the consensus it ticks a little bit higher. So this will be the headline number that we'll want to be watching here, that 2.6, um, 2.7. If we come in at 2.7, we're probably going to be fine. It is an increase, and that reduces that chance of a Fed rate cut if it goes higher than that with with a hot GDP like we had yesterday, every reason to believe that could move up. So watch that carefully here. If that goes a little bit higher, that might disappoint the market in suggesting, hey, there may not be a rate cut in September. So keep a close eye on that. Um, after that, we got a Chicago PMI, and our PMI consensus is suggesting a 46.4. Remember, anything under 50% means our PMI is in, or 50, it means our PMI is still in contraction. Although that's an improvement over last time, we would still be in a contraction um, um, economy there. If we take a look at our consumer sentiment, looking for consumer sentiment to move up just a tenth here to 67.9. You do want to remember that that is a very low sentiment number. So keep that in mind. Um, if it comes in better than that, the market might celebrate, comes in less than that. Well, you know the, you know the drill here. If we take a look um, at um, inflation expectations, they're expecting it to come in flat. So keep an eye on those. Baker Hughes rig count. We got farm prices here at the end of the day, and then we're going to wrap up this week. Remember, everyone, we have a three-day weekend coming, so don't be too surprised after we get these morning data points here today that we end up with a market that just becomes very, very stale. So look for your, um, your move sometime this morning. Um, look for whipsaws, uh, certainly possible with the way we're gapping up here this morning. And then um, just kind of 
Uh, think about the idea that all these trading floors and things, they're going to clear out pretty quickly. Everybody's going to be heading out for their three-day weekend, trying to um, extend as much time as they can off. So watch carefully for that. Then if we take a look at our earnings calendar here today, well, our earnings calendar is much lighter today. Not much going on. As a matter of fact, I've only got two um, earnings reports that are somewhat notable. DOOO will be reporting this morning, trying to push up here, um, heading into that report. So keep an eye on that. And the only other one is JKS that'll be reporting this morning as well. Of course, there are other earnings reports out there, but really um, small cap, not much of interest in them unless you're actually holding them. So keep a close eye on those earnings today. So how about we take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, everyone, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor, and that would be click that thumbs up button, leave that brief comment, that helps the channel to grow. Thank you so much for everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly appreciate it. it. means the world to me. You guys are truly awesome. So thank you so very, very much. Let's take a look at a few of these charts that could be setting up. Remember, everyone, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful in this market with the numbers that we have today. We could certainly see some volatility, some whipsaws. So be prepared for that possibility. And remember, always follow your trading guidelines and your trading rules. Never blindly follow anyone else's trade ID. So first off, let's take a little bit, um, let's take a look at um, gold in here. Gold has been really, really strong and continuing to look quite bullish in this little resting consolidation. So if we continue to see the dollar weaken, then there's every reason to believe that we could continue to see the dollar weaken when we're talking about rate cuts. Um, the dollar will typically fall because we devalue the dollar. So looking in here, watch this pretty carefully here, this nice little tight consolidation if you're interested in um, some precious metals. Keep an eye on that. Now, this could also have some kind of a negative effect today. If, for example, the core PCE number were to suggest that, well, maybe a rate cut might be out of the question, for September, then of course we would have that situation where the gold could um, make a pretty substantial pullback as well. So keep a close eye on that. You might also want to keep an eye on PHYS. Now I kind of prefer to trade PHYS because this is actually physical gold rather than the paper gold that you trade in GLD. Also a very bullish pattern. Silver would be another place to be keeping an eye on. Notice we've made this nice little rally in here in silver. We've pushed up in this chart and we're resting right in this area. So look for that opportunity. If those bulls can get going, we might start pushing on up here toward those next areas of resistance in the chart so keep an eye on silver or PSLV which is a physical silver ETF one that you might be interested in also we want to be keeping a pretty close eye on bonds if you take a look at TLT TLT has made this nice run to the upside but we're doing some resting and consolidating in here trying to figure out the next direction of the market. Today's core PCE number could maybe give us some clues on this because if we see that core PCE number come in um, as expected or better than expected, then we would expect to see bond yields pull back. And if those bond yields do pull back, then I would look for this to start making that move back to the upside here in the chart. So watch that closely. Now, opposite is uh, the same. If that core PCE number were to come in stronger than expected, then look for this to pull back. And you could also look at things like BND. BND has been in a very bullish upside trend here. 
um, in that chart. And again, it's going to be very dependent on the strength of the dollar, whether or not those bond yields are going up or down. So keep a close eye on BND. Let's take a look at um, some of the other uh, precious metals out there. Take a look at palladium, P-A-L. Um, looking really good in this move to the upside. I've got some all of my drawings on here, but you can see pushing up, we're pushing up toward this resistance in this gap up this morning. So keep an eye on that. If we can start breaking through some of these resistance levels in the chart, might be worth paying attention to. So keep an eye on palladium. And I've been watching um, FCX here, um, looking for a potential entry. So far, it's just not quite there. Maybe it'll be there next week. This nice little resting pattern in here on this support after breaking the downtrend. Look for an opportunity if copper can start to come around and maybe break on through to the upside. So watch that carefully. Let's take a look at some other areas of the market. Boy, some of the industrials are looking quite good. Take a look at Caterpillar. Um, after breaking my alert here in the chart, and just a reminder, next Tuesday, guys, I'm gonna be doing a free class Tuesday evening. Um, just come to the Hit and Run Candlesticks website. Um, go to the free trading room, um, 8 p.m. Eastern next Tuesday, and I'm going to be talking about the pop-out-of-the-box pattern. That's really what we have going here. Pretty simple pattern to trade and very reliable. So looking in here, Caterpillars, you can see after breaking that alert, kind of stretching up, and we're continuing to see that bullishness come into these industrials. CMI is another, and this has just been a quite a move here after breaking through through that little pop out you can see moving up nicely here in the trend stretching here this morning as caterpillar i mean cummins um, continuing to extend on higher and john deere had a pretty interesting um, move yesterday right up here testing this um, resistance area of the chart and you can see we're holding that higher low even got a little bit of an inverted head and shoulders pattern showing up in there so if the bulls can find their um, find their legs here every reason to believe that could pop on out in the chart now you can choose to tr try and buy it when we break through that resistance here or let it break out and then rest back look for the opportunity there but John Deere certainly seems to be coming around and even uh, Boeing has been trying to put in a little higher low pattern obviously not a lot of energy in it yet we've popped through and we're bouncing around in this consolidating range but it is something worth to be paying attention to because if we can find our legs in here we might just start pushing that right on through to the upside. So keep an eye there. Of course, you know, I've been keeping an eye here on Disney. There's another little tight consolidating pattern in here. We're kind of stuck in a range, watching for that opportunity that that might find some buyers in here after slipping out from underneath that downtrend. Keep an eye on that for that potential in Disney. And I continue to talk about this one as well. Um, and Mickey D's, um, that next opportunity, if we can find that bullish energy in here, might push right on through here in Mickey D's. Um, take a look at uh, Spotify. Spotify has been struggling in this area. It did pop my alert and then just kind of been wandering around in here on that chart. So watch that carefully. You might want to place another alert right up in here and if we can get that stretch to pop on through, then you can see Spotify may have some upside room to run there at that point in time. Keep an eye on that. On that, There's a lot of stocks like this right now, everyone. Um, they're literally everywhere in the market as we're trying to figure out whether we're going to have the energy to keep on moving higher. Roku, Roku breaking this downtrend in here and you can see crossing up through some resistance and now resting back a little bit. Got a little bullishness coming in there uh, today, trying to show in the pre-market. Now, one thing I would say is this is a little bit on the steep side, but you can also say, hey, we're right in here on the trend. So if that can find that, that bullish energy, look for Roku maybe to push on through 
um, up there. So looking pretty good in quite a few areas of the market. PayPal is another one that I've been paying attention to and you can see PayPal, there's that tight little consolidation right there trying to push on up and had a really good day yesterday pushing to the upside stocks like sq nice little resting pattern here a inverted head and shoulders pattern you can see that nice little resting pattern in here and maybe starting to show that bullishness that we could start breaking on higher now you do have to you know also consider the fact that you know we've got a 200 day moving average up there we're holding that 50 in the chart but it is a pattern that we want to be paying attention to um, if you look at this on a weekly this has been quite a bottoming pattern in here and breaking from underneath that downtrend is important in that opportunity that maybe we could stretch up here in what we call a weekly rounded bottom break breakout pattern so keep an eye on sq as well so there's a few stocks for you to be paying attention to hey i want to wish you all a fantastic day remember could be quite a bit of volatility this morning. We could see kind of a dead and boring market this afternoon. Remember that um, uh, past that point, we um, we go into a three-day weekend. So plan your trades carefully. Make sure you are thinking about the risks of those potential um, three days where we can't do anything. And I will see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Take care, be safe, have a great weekend. Wish you all the best.